Welcome back to Elman 14 Presents. I'm Lorraine, and this week I'm going to run to the moon. In one of my previous videos, I recreated a classic arcade game, the Derby, where horses run to a finish line, but I used Strava data for me, my brother and my husband, and we raced each other. Um, I wasn't very successful in this race, <laughs> but it was so much fun. For this video, we're not going to race each other, we're going to run together for a single goal, and this is to run to the moon. So we're going to try and reach the moon by the end of the year. We're going to use Strava data again, but this time we're going to use lights, not motors, to represent the data moving along. Um, I might use different colours for different runners, so you can see, you can do a little bit of competition and see who's running the most, but otherwise it's going to be a ladder up to the moon and each light will represent a certain number of miles. I'm switching it up this time by using a Pico W instead of Arduino. So the code will be a bit different, the build will be a lot different because we're not doing anything so complicated with motors this time. Let's get started. Design-wise then, it's kind of all about the ladder. So if we look at a traditional looking ladder and I thought about like, because I want to do like a strip of lights, so it's going to be a single strip of lights for ease of use. So I could do it this way, you know, up the kind of this half, then across the rung and crisscross. But I think if you can't see the ladder, you know, this won't look like a ladder when it's lit up. So I want more like this, like full on um, these two sides, full on lit up. But when I started even just creating this image, I thought, uh, this is a lot of lights. <laughs> And it might be too much. So sometimes I design things on paper, sometimes I design it kind of digitally here, um, never do I do it in CAD, but sometimes it's just best to build it, and especially when it's a simple thing like lights. So I'm just going to try and build a few options and have a think about that. Some extra thoughts here while I'm wiring up then. So the Pico, this is the in of the um, meter strip, so the Pico would go here and it would control this meter strip then we'd have a connection from here to the rest of the rungs. So it's like, it's going to be all one strip, um, but the numbering is going to go like uh, down, up, down, then this way, then this way. But thinking about it, I kind of visually, I kind of want like the ladder to look really kind of bendy and flexible and to look like a ladder. So like, I want it to look like this here, so it ends here. And I don't want this to be here. I don't want the Pico to be at the bottom. I don't want any wiring. Um, to be at the bottom, so just one like an, the end of a ladder. So, ooh, how are we going to do that? We're not going to be able to do that. We could put the Pico up here so it's hidden kind of inside the moon. But what if we have then instead, we have one singular strip each side. This means our ladder is now one meter long, which could be cool. I need to check the power requirements and the Pico's pins. So now the inn is here. Pico is in the moon, but then where does the wiring go? Can we control three separate light strips from a Pico? So this one, the the rungs, and then the second side of the ladder. Because um, I don't, like I said, I don't want anything at the bottom of the ladder. I just want this to be clear so it looks like a ladder. Um, need to do some investigation into that. Into can I handle the power and can I handle three separate light strips. The alternative is to run wires up and down the ladder. So the lights would go down here and then back up through the rungs like that and then down this one. So there's always going to be wiring here because of these guys. There's always going to be some amount of wiring but I'm hoping to hide a lot of it behind these. Uh, I don't want to have these on like static uh, acrylic strips because like I said I want it to be like a flowing bendy la looking leather or maybe I don't <laughs> it's all part of the design process right okay to figure out my design I've gone and lit up the ladder so this is still the single loop and I've lit up one rung to see is it too much and I think it is uh, because of this closeness so if you have a look you know the closeness of these LEDs versus these LEDs. Uh, I don't think this really works, but I've had some real great advice from Twitter. 
So a couple of users said, what about some, you know, leaving this blank and using acrylic? And I can't see in the dark. <laughs> I put my acrylic down. What do I do with it? Oh, it's over there. Um, so moving the ladders in and, you know, putting, lighting up some acrylic from the edge. We try and do that here. So if we turn the light sideways and try and light this acrylic from the edge, we could go up in pairs. Oh, that looks good, doesn't it? Um, so we go up just kind of like almost a rung is a significant number. You know, every LED is 10 miles, but then a rung is like 50 or so, something like that, you know? Um, so when a rung lights up, it's a significant number and the number the numbers would go up in pairs. Yeah, I like this. I just need to figure out how to hook the acrylic onto the strip. So yeah, you can see there what's happening. So it's just a, a lump of acrylic. I put some holes in the acrylic just to kind of maybe practice putting, like maybe threading it and then tying it onto the side. But, or maybe because the side has a plastic kind of wrap to it. So I could put a needle through there um, to tie it on or I could try and maybe 3D print a hook. But yeah, we're definitely making progress with our design. What I wanted to do though, is get on with making the moon. Back to the ladder then, here's the newly designed rung. So it's got two kind of hooky edges that are gonna hook onto the edge of the side of the ladder and that fits really nicely there. So I just have to weigh down the two strips before I can start kind of putting on each individual rung. It's a bit fiddly, but I've adjusted it a few times to make sure it fits on quite snug. Let's put a third one on for this demo and let's plug it in. Whoa. Let's see without the top rung lit. I think that's a really important test to do because I need to see what, you know, a dead rung looks like. And that's it. And that looks really, really good. I'm really happy with this. I like how the ladder looks flexible, but still looks like a ladder. Mum, how far away is the moon? Oh, um... It's not that far, is it? It's like, what, like, like 10,000 miles? What do you think? Mm, more than that. More than 10,000? Yeah. It's very far away. It takes like three days for a rocket to get there. Oh yeah, and that's, that's like a rocket as well. Yeah. I should, I should look that up. <laughs> <laughs> So the moon is really far away. <laughs> so I could, um, I could still use my moon that I made. Um, it's just a bit weak. So I'm quite glad I don't have to use it. And the ISS space station is so much closer. So it gives me a great excuse to buy and build a new Lego set and use it in this project. Are you an engineer, electronics hobbyist or maker? Join the Element 14 community where you can learn about new products and technologies, see cool projects and connect directly with the people that make the products and engineers that use them. Join now! For the Pico W then, we need this um, circuit library just to help us install some circuit Python libraries onto the Pico W. You need the Pico W <laughs> code, not the Pico code, which is what I downloaded initially. So if you search that on Google, it brings you to the 
CircuitPython website. So you hold down the reset button as you plug in the USB cable and that lets you download this code on there. Then the actual libraries we need are the Adafruit requests library. We also need this JSON stream library because of the problems with memory. Um, it is a CircuitPython library. It's only three weeks old, so maybe it's a bit too young to be actually, actually in the library. So you have to go to GitHub, download the whole repository and grab this one file, the Adafruit JSON stream.py file, paste that into the lib directory of your CircuitPython directory of your Pico. So it's a bit of a faff, but it's easy to do. Then the final library that I need is the NeoPixel library. And that should be everything we need for this project. Let's look at the code a bit closer then. So for this, we're using CircuitPython. Um, so this is our Wi-Fi stuff. So we've got this hidden in the secrets file and we just print out our IP address just for a matter of information. This is the authentication URL that we need to start with. If you want to know how Strava works with refresh tokens and access tokens, I did a full video of this as an extra to my previous video on the Derby. So if you go to the LN14 Presents website, you'll find that there. But you need a token for each runner. So I've stored that in the secrets file. I have a bit of a problem with memory again. So this is really just a nasty hack to clear out the memory for each loop. So we look at each runner and we start to get their data. So we get the client and the seeker are mine. The refresh token is unique to each runner. And we're getting the access token is our first request. That's our first post request. Then our next request is we're looking at every activity after the 1st of May. Um, that's a Unix time timestamp for the 1st of May 2023. And we're sending in the access token. So we're doing this for every runner and we stream that into this JSON variable. We had to do this because of the memory problem. So I had multiple memory problems. It's the same on Arduino, to be honest. Then what I'm doing is I'm just adding the total to the runner's total. So I don't really want to know any more information. I could get them by date so that it kind of goes, you know, if I ran one day, it would be red. And the next day my brother ran twice, he, he would be blue and he'd have more lights than me. I think that would be a better way of doing it. Uh, and it's, it's doable, it's just a matter of rewriting the code. But here, I just set up my NeoPixels. Here's some fake data that I was playing around with. Um, so the station is 420 kilometers away. So we work out that we need like about 14 kilometers. We need to run at least 14 kilometers to light up a single set of LEDs. We need like 14,000 <laughs> if we were going to the moon. So yeah, we're quite glad that we're not going to the moon because um, like I wouldn't even get that in a year. I wouldn't even single light in the year. So here's some fun maths that we do to work out how many lights each runner lights up at a time. So it starts with the first runner and the second runner and going through the lights, going backwards. So we start at the bottom of the ladder from 30 we go towards the first light for the first runner and then so on and so forth. We change that total. Um, I might change this a bit. So I've got left and right on two different pins, but they're matching. So I may as well just keep them on the same pin. It saves like a little bit of code, but I quite like the idea of that, like of sharing pins because it's, it's a pair of data. It'll make more sense when I show you it running. And I might add this code. I had this code running just to test the ladder. It's just some rainbow lights. <laughs> so I might start that bef um, when we turn on the ladder while it's connecting to Wi-Fi maybe. I'll put this code, not the secrets code, but this code onto the Element 14 community. But let me show you the ladder. Wiring up the ladder to the Pico then is actually quite simple. I don't even need like this massive um, breadboard. I've just got this little baby one. So we only have three wires when it comes to these kind of RGB strips. We have ground, power and data. So that's what's coming out of the Pico here. Um, I did decide to do, use one pin for both light strips um, because I'm doing the lights in pairs. So I've got pin, which one is it? 17 connected to the board here um, and ground and power all connected to the board and then you'll see like there's three of each so you see these these are the three power wires so there's one coming in from the pico and two going out for each of the light strips 
Same here for ground and then same here for data. And I've just strapped up the, the light strips here at the end and that's the wires going in. So it's a really simple circuit, really simple electronics. What makes the project fun is the idea that you're visualizing this kind of data. So you're creating, you're getting, pulling data from an API and visualizing it with physical computing, um, which is what I absolutely love. This won't be the last project you see me using an API and lights on. Actually, it could just be the, the one of many. <laughs> I've opened up a can of worms here. So here we are in the loft. <laughs> I'm running out of places to put my projects. But uh, no, really, I have a great place for this in the sitting room on the mantelpiece. But it's just difficult to photograph that spot because there's a lot of people in it and there's a lot of reflections of TVs in the way. So I just brought it up here to show you guys in its full glory. Um, the space station looks amazing. Uh, this is the ladder and it like, kind of floats when it, LEDs move on it, which is like absolutely brilliant. That's exactly what I wanted. This is my brother, Al. He's blue. He is obviously crushing us. Um, I'm red and my husband is green you need 14 kilometers to get on the ladder so we haven't even made it onto the ladder and he's almost finished he's, he's way more than halfway so well done Al uh, for keeping up the team um, he is training for a half marathon you know in my defense he, he is like he has got a goal in mind besides running to the ISS space station uh, let me show you the rainbow effect which is also really cool power wise I've actually just got it plugged into my laptop here, which obviously isn't ideal. I just don't have a USB extension cable to make it to the plug. Definitely going to add that to the shopping list, but... <laughs> I think I'll just have this running. Who cares about running to the ISS space station? So yeah, it does kind of... It did, it did wave a little bit as the LEDs, the electricity went through it, which I just, I just love that idea. Um, I keep fiddling with the, the rungs because I keep noticing they're not uh, exactly online with the lights, which is fine. Super happy with this project. It looks amazing and it is a real it is a real motivator because you can see your progress, how many miles you've run. I'd love uh, to do the moon. <laughs> um, maybe like a running club could recreate this with a longer strip and have a, like, a, a, like a beach ball size moon in their running club, uh, like headquarters. I would love to see that. Let me know if anybody's gonna recreate this project. I'd be so excited to see what you guys come up with. Future ad adaptations then is obviously the power. Oh, that's the um, Strava coming in, Strava running data. It doesn't take that long. I just have a 40 second pause between the rainbow and the running data. It takes about 10 seconds uh, to get all three runners data in. Uh, so future wise, I would like to get the power sorted. So it's just straight to a plug and you're away. I'd love to add uh, more APIs to this. So there's an API for the actual space station itself so you can tell where it is in the world so maybe like it lights up when it's near the UK or near your location so we could add like GPS to it that would be really awesome I just love adding um, data lights lights to data it's kind of my, my thing like making uh, data come alive through illuminations and visualizations what do you think of the project let me know in the comments below and on the element 14 community I'll be there to answer any questions you have until next time.